She was overwhelmed by a feeling of sadness, but she knew they weren't her feelings. It was so overwhelming, and she ran out of the room. And when she returned, she knew she was not alone in that very room. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That indeed it is. Welcome to the program. If you'd like uh, access to all of our advanced episodes, no commercials, and the archive of episodes, the world's largest audio archive of ghost stories. Check it out on our premium channel on Apple Podcasts or patreon.com slash real ghost stories or ghostpodcast.com to get in on all of that. Tony and Carol with you on today's episode of the program. Sometimes those those moments happen. It's it's hard to place why suddenly you get overwhelmed by sadness or whatever emotion it is, but it's something to pay attention to depending on the setting that you're in. Not only for your own mental health, because sometimes there could just be something going right. on with you that right. you need you need to get yourself some help. Um, but sometimes, yeah, it, it's like, where is this coming from? Why am I ha- feeling emotions that otherwise don't feel like mine? Has that happened to you before? Because um, I've had that happen. I have. I have been in locations where it's like a wave that kind of, it's like, yeah. what is this? And... I, and it's, it's, yeah, I mean, it, it makes you question yourself because you're going, well, is there something that's just, that triggered me that, that, uh, you know, somehow put me into this, this mental place. Uh, but sometimes it's just like, there's no reason, rhyme or reason to any of it. But I don't know. Our minds are very interesting things, the way that they find ways of releasing stress and sadness and all those sorts of emotions. And sometimes they can come up without really a whole lot of triggering sometimes it's the environment and sometimes it's a very safe environment where sometimes those things pop up because your body and mind know that they're in a a okay place to to release and then it'll it'll pop up in weird ways i think that if you're home and you get overwhelmed by sadness and you know and you live in a non-haunted house Mm -hmm. that could be you but i think if you're at a different location you know, you're visiting someplace or maybe taking a tour of some really cool looking house, mm-hmm. you know, older house that you're, you know, historical tour or something. And it happens there. Yeah. That might be different than when it happens at home. I, yeah. If you don't live in a haunted house. Yeah, I agree. And if you live in a haunted house, then you're all just, bets are off. You're just screwed <laughs> then. But uh, let's go to this uh, phone call. Let's do it. Uh, 855-853-4802 is the number. Hi. This is Eve. I have a couple of stories. Well, I have a couple thousand, but I'll just do a couple today. <laughs> just a tiny bit of background because my background is a whole other phone call. But tiny bit of background. I have felt things since I even remember existing, maybe age three. Seen things, heard things, smelled things, um, and believe in believe in a lot, but not quite sure exactly what it is I believe. So... First story is, I'm 43 years old. This is back at the end of college. I graduated in 99. My boyfriend at the time was from Rochester, New York, went up to visit his parents. They lived in a new complex. Totally nothing scary about it. We weren't even talking about ghosts, thinking about ghosts, nothing about ghosts. Went up there to visit, stayed the night. Parents are traditional, made me sleep in a separate room, which I thought was ridiculous, but then again different podcast altogether to talk about that. Um, So uh, the room I was staying in is the guest room. The guest room was essentially grandma's room. Grandma, when she came to visit, she lived nearby. She would always stay in there. Grandpa was dead. Grandpa had died a few years before. The room when you first walked in was like totally depressing, but like in a haha funny way, like you walk in, it's maroon and beige paisley comforter on a bed and all the pictures are in these ornate frames and they're all black and white pictures of all the dead family members. And it's almost like funny when you walk in because you're like, whoa, okay, this is clearly grandma's room, right? But still, no big deal, whatever, go about our day, whatever, I go to bed. I go to bed. 
Now, this bedroom has a sliding closet door, one of these heavy wooden sliding closet doors. It doesn't open and close, it slides open and closed. It was, uh, you know, maybe like three inches open and I was like, hell no, I'm not going to sleep with that. I have OCD, can't look at that partially open closet door out of the corner of my eye until I fall asleep. Forget it, get out of bed, walk across the room, close it all the way, go back to bed. Trying to go to bed become overwhelmed with this feeling of sadness, of this just despair, of a longing, of missing somebody you're in love with, just this desperate feeling of like, where are you? Where did you go? Why are we not together? It's just this horrible, sad feeling as if I was watching a romantic movie and the couple split up or somebody died or, and it wasn't my feelings. I was not sad. But I was just overcome with this other person's sadness. And I've never experienced an um, empathetic situation like that in my life. It was the first time ever that remotely I was acutely aware that these were not my feelings, but I was feeling them very strongly. Wasn't in a fight with my boyfriend, hadn't cried, wasn't upset about anything in my personal life. To the point where, you know, I'm a 21-year-old adult going knocking on my boyfriend's bedroom door like, can I come and sleep in here? Like, really? Like, I just wanted to get away from this feeling. Um, long story short, the only thing that I could amount it to is that, you know, grandpa was like, well, who is this lady sleeping in this bed that only grandma ever sleeps in? Nobody ever stayed over there. So really, the guest bedroom was grandma's room. And here's this re- weird girl here. Where's my wife? You know, that's kind of what I think happened. Um, my boyfriend at the time refused to let me in his bed, didn't want to get in trouble with his parents, is kind of being a dick, doesn't believe in anything, thought it was crazy, and, you know, PMSing or something stupid, and wanted me to go back to bed. So I did. So somehow fell asleep in that room, woke up, opened my eyes, still lying in bed. That fucking closet door was wide the fuck open. Never went back to that house again. So <laughs> that's one story. Did anyone believe me? No. Did my boyfriend at the time believe me? No. Did he ever call me in the past 20 years to go, hey, you know, by the way? Nope. So uh, that's fine. You believe what you want to believe. I'll believe what I want to believe. But I think that grandpa was looking for grandma. Uh, Another quick story. I have a story about my mother's house. This is a house in Sherborne, Massachusetts. It was built in 1969. Nobody ever died there. We bought it from the people that owned it before us. However, that uh, that had built the house. Um, This is uh, a suburb of Boston, about 45 minutes uh, southwest of Boston. It is totally Native American land and also farmland previously, mostly forest, you know, less than 50 year old pines growing uh, around areas that were um, once fields, you know, uh, earlier in the century or last century. Um, and, um, you know, plenty of people buried their dead on their fields. So whether it's Native American spirits or, you know, Puritan spirits, we don't know. But what, um, or, you know, I, the reason I did that research to figure out what was going on there was because uh, when I was over there, um, one day, you um, you know, I uh, I saw a ghost just walk right down, you know, right right through the yard. I was, it was the middle of the day. My cousin was visiting from France. Uh, my mom was in the kitchen with her making lunch. My brother was reading a book on the couch. We were all standing there, his glass lighting towards the living room. And just as plain as day, this woman walked by through the yard, straight across. You know, I watch her walk from right to left, continue on, doesn't look at us, doesn't look around, just walk straight ahead. All right. She looked young, maybe 20, maybe 15, hard to say. Um, small, petite, uh, but, but, you know, somewhat of an adult type, but, you know, maybe 18, um, wearing white, but, you know, and not necessarily see through, but when you're looking through a door, you know, a, gl- a double pane glass door in the middle of the day with sunshine, sometimes things can look a little foggy. Um, I immediately looked behind me to see if someone was walking behind me in that direction. No, none of my family members looked like that or were wearing that. And the interesting part is that the, the woman outside walked straight 
um, straight, straight ahead. And the thing is, the house is on a hill. So at a certain point, you have to jump down the cliff to get any further. And she just kept going straight. Now, I, to this point, you know, thought this is an actual human being. I'm like, what the fuck is this lady doing walking around in our yard? So I, like, whip open this, the door. I'm like, hey, there's a lady in our yard. And I announce it to everybody. I go outside and I look around, look around, look around. Nothing there. Come back inside. Does anyone believe me? No. Is anyone paying attention to me? No. All right. You believe what you want to believe. I believe what I want to believe. You will be hearing from me again. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thank you for sharing that story with us. And no, that was not an EVP in the middle of it. I uh, I clicked on something and then uh, <laughs> the word all right popped up. Uh, and that's why just because just when I will get messages. Because someone would comment on that. At oh eight God. minutes and 16 seconds yeah, into it, it's not, an EVP. It is not an EVP. It's Tony clicking on something that had audio that I didn't know. So, uh, But no, creepy stories. I really liked her uh, her storytelling. You know, that first story, too, with the she's feeling all the emotions when she's in this, the room by herself that feels like grandma's room. Mm-hmm. But the weird thing was, was that she shut the closet door. And I, I'm very much like that. I don't like the closet door to be wide open at all. I can't sleep. Mm -hmm. And like my closet door, it can be open a little bit because it doesn't shut all the way. I have have like a a rack over the top of it so it won't shut completely. Yeah. But I have to have it shut as much as it can. So I would get up. That would be me. If I was staying someplace, I would get up, make sure that closet door shut. And then that weird thing happened. She tries to go sleep with her boyfriend who's like, no, I'm at my mom and dad's house. You can't sleep with me. And then she goes back and the door is wide open. Mm-hmm. That would freak me out. It that is. part would freak me out. It is creepy, creepy stuff right there. That's why I don't like to keep like my, my, I like keeping doors shut when I sleep. I don't, I don't do like. Do you have them all shut? Like the bedroom door, the closet door, everything shut? Yeah, I do. Uh, we do. Yeah. Sh- there's a bathroom door and there's the, the door to the outside of the room into the rest of the house and both are shut. Um, it's funny, like during, I, I, I notice it, it at night, I like to keep them shut during the day, the bathroom one, we keep open quite often. Uh, even if we're like, just kind of having a chill day, like watching movies or something in bed, that one will be open. Door. But at night we close it. I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's, I don't know. I don't know what that is, but it's I, a it, different it's, feeling it's at a, night. it is, it's a routine. It's a, there's something there about that. I mean, it's not something that, that that she's picking to do either or I am. It's just kind of like it's collective. It's kind of just what we like, what we do. I don't know. Um, but yeah, there is a different feeling at night uh, with that stuff. Not that I fear that there's zombies that are going to come out of my um, bathroom, but you know, it's 2024 and anything is possible. So that's yes. going to, it's going to wrap up this episode of the program. <laughs> uh, if you uh, like the show, you want access to the bonus episodes, advanced episodes, all that, check it out on Apple podcasts or premium channel there for you or uh, patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Until next time for Carol, I'm Tony. Thank you for listening to another episode of real ghost stories online. <laughs>